Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about working with strings in Java. Now, a string is one of the most common types of information that you're going to be using inside of your Java programs. String is basically just like a collection of text. So any text that you want to store inside of your Java program, we can store inside of a string. And today I'm going to show you just basically like how we can work with strings in Java. And I also want to show you guys how we can use specific methods on those strings to do things to them. So a method is basically just like a little piece of code that we can call and that code will modify our string or give us information about that string. So let's just jump right into it. I want to create a print statement. So I'm going to say system.out.println and in here, we can just kind of play around with strings. So I'm going to create a string using two quotation marks. And why don't we just type out a phrase so we can just say like draft Academy. Now this is considered a string in Java. So I can go ahead, run my program and this will get printed out onto the screen over here. Inside of these strings, we can actually use some special characters. So one thing you might be wondering is how could I create a new line inside of my string? So let's say I wanted to have draft on one line and academy on the next line. I can actually use a special character. So we can type this backslash. And when you use this backslash, basically what it's telling Java is that we want to include a special little character inside of our string. If I type backslash n, what this is going to do is it's going to create a new line inside of our string. So when I run this program now, you'll see that draft and academy are on different lines. And I could actually get rid of the space here and now they'll be sort of in line with each other. So you can use this uh, backslash n. Another thing we can do in strings is include quotation marks. So if you're working with a string, let's say I wanted to put quotation marks around academy. Well, you'll notice that I'm already using these open and close quotation marks in order to denote that we're using a string. If I wanted to put quotes around it, I can use that backslash again. So I can say backslash and now I can use these quotation marks and I can do the same thing over here, backslash quotation marks. And now Academy will have quotation marks around it. So we'll run the program and you'll see that over here we have quotes around Academy. So there's certain characters inside of these strings that mean certain things. So for example, let's say I wanted to put a backslash inside of my program. I can't just put a backslash like this. This backslash is actually used as an escape character, which means it kind of like tells the string that we want to do something special. So I could just use backslash backslash. And now I'll be able to have a backslash inside of my string, as you can see over here. So there's a bunch of different things you can backslash. And actually, if I just type out the backslash here, a little list should pop up for us. And you can see here, um, valid escape characters are backslash B, backslash T, backslash N, F, R, double quote, single quote, and backslash. So you can play around with all of those different backslashes and they'll allow you to do different things inside of your strings. So let's talk about how we can move strings onto different lines. Um, one thing you might be wondering is like, let's say I had a really long string of text inside of here and it like went off the screen. You can actually move strings onto different lines so they'll display better. So I could just hit enter and my text editor Eclipse is actually gonna automatically do this for me. But what you can do is you can type out a line and this is gonna be like open and closed quotation marks, move on to the next line, use a plus sign and then you can type out more open and close quotation marks. So I could technically create as many of these lines as I wanted, and it'll just allow me to move the text onto different lines. But this isn't actually gonna create new lines when I print this out. So when I print this text out, you'll notice that it's all gonna be on the same line as you can see up here. But that just sort of makes it a little bit easier to you know, manage the strings that are inside of your code. So. Now what I want to do is create a string variable and I'm going to show you guys how we can use special string methods. So I can just say string phrase is equal to draft academy. And if I want to print this out, I can just go down here and type out phrase and this will basically just print out draft academy. But there's actually some cool things that we can do with this variable. So Inside of Java, there are these little things called methods. 
And a method is basically just a little piece of code that we can use on something like a string and it will either modify that string or it will give us information about that string. So don't worry too much about, you know, the specifics of what methods are. Just know that we can use them to do different things to our strings. So there's a couple of different methods that I want to show you guys. And the way that we can use a method is just by typing out the variable name and I can just say dot and now I can type out the name of the method that I want to use. So one method we can use will convert this string into all uppercase. So I can say two uppercase. And anytime I call one of these methods, I always want to use an open and close parentheses after it. So you'll see here we have phrase and then I'm calling a method on this. So I'm saying dot the name of the method to uppercase and then an open and closed parentheses. So as long as you have it structured like that, you're going to be able to call this method. So now when I run my program, you'll see that it prints out draft Academy, but it's all in capital letters. So that's actually kind of cool. I can also use another one, which is to lowercase. So I bet you guys can guess what this does. It's going to convert all the text into lowercase. So those are two useful string functions. And you'll notice that those two functions to uppercase and to lowercase, those are actually modifying what the string looks like. And certain methods are going to allow you to do that. You can also use methods to get information about the string. So there's another method we can use, which is called length. So I'm just going to say length, and this will tell me how many characters are inside of this string. So now when I run my program, you'll see that it gives us 15 because there's 15 characters inside of draft Academy. So this is an example of a method that gives us some information about the string. We can also find out some more information about this string. So I could actually use another method, which is called contains. And this method is unique because we can actually give it some information. So the contains method is going to tell us whether or not our string, this phrase string contains a certain set of characters. So I can come in here and I can actually give this a value. And sometimes with these methods, you don't need to give them information, but other times you need to give them information for them to perform their function. So I'm going to give this some information and I can just type out like Academy. And this is basically going to tell us whether or not the phrase string contains the word Academy. And you'll see here, I can run my program and it returns a true because our string does contain the word Academy. But if I was to type in like dog here, this is going to end up being false because our string doesn't contain the string dog. So that's kind of a cool method. And that's actually going to give us back a Boolean value, which is kind of cool. So the length method gave us a number back and this contains method gave us a Boolean value back. So it gave us a true or false value back. In addition to using this contains method, there's actually another cool method we can use, which is called char at. And basically what char at does is it'll allow us to specify a index in the string and it'll tell us what character is at that index. So I could give this a number and it'll tell me like what character is at that position in our string. So I'm going to give this a one. Now you'd think that when I give this a one, it's going to give us this G character, right? Because it seems like the G character is at the first index of the string. It's, a, it's the first character in the string. So phrase dot char at should give us this G. And when I run the program, you'll see that it doesn't give us a G. It actually gives us an I. So this char at method is supposed to tell us what character is at the index that we give it but it's actually giving us this I and there's a reason for this. And I, this is a, a point that I want to bring up when we're dealing with strings, particularly when we're dealing with the index of strings, it's a little bit different in Java. So normally you would say like the first character in this string is G. The second character is I, the third character is R. Like if I had to give these index positions, I'd say like, Oh, character one is G. But inside of Java and actually inside of a lot of programming languages, we start the indexing at zero. So you start counting at zero. So if I was to say, what's the first character in the string, Java would say it's this I because I is technically at index position one G over here is at index position zero. So if we wanted to write out the indexes for this string, it would be like zero is G 
one is I, two is R, three is A, four is F, five is the other F, six is E. So the character at index position zero is G, the character at index position three is A. So inside of this char at function, I need to give this the index that I want to access inside of a particular string. So if I wanted to access that G, all I'd have to do is say zero. And now because G is at the zeroth position in the string, Java would say G is the zeroth character inside the string. Now it'll return this G over here. So let's try this one more time. Let's see if we can grab this F right here. Well, F is gonna be at index position zero, one, two, three, four. So if we put four inside of here, now we should be able to access that F, which we do. So that's how you can use char at, and that's also just some information about how strings are indexed. And that's gonna come in handy in Java. You just know that the zeroth index inside of a string is always gonna be like the first character inside of the string. So this char at method is gonna be really useful. And I wanna show you guys another method that we can use, which is called index of. And this is kind of like the opposite of the char at function. So, and also I just want to point out, I, th I think I might have said the word function a couple times in addition to saying the word method. Inside of Java, the word function and the word method actually mean the same thing. So if I say function, uh, it means the same thing as if I say method. So this index of method is basically going to tell us at what index a specific character is inside of this string. So inside of index of, I can just give this like, for example, a character. So I could say a and what this will do is it'll tell me at what index that A appears. So I'll click the run button and you'll see it says three over here. So index of gave us the index of this first A. So zero, one, two, three, A is at the third index inside of this string. So when I say index of A, it's gonna give us that index. You can also type in like a, just a string. So if I said A F F E, it's gonna be able to do the same thing. So now I'll click play and you'll see it's still giving me this three. It's basically telling me where this collection of characters starts. So AFFE starts at the third index of the string. But you'll notice that we're actually only grabbing this first A. So there's another A over here and over here. So if I wanted to, for example, grab this other A, I can use another function, which is called last index of. And last index of is gonna tell us the position of the last location of this character. So if I just said A, now it's gonna give us the index of this A character right here. So let's run the program and you'll see it gives us 10 and that's the index of this A character. So that's index of and last index of and those are gonna come in handy a lot. You're definitely gonna be using those uh, when you're writing Java. There's one more method that I wanna show you guys and it's called substring. And the substring method is a really powerful method because it's going to allow us to grab a specific part of our string. So let's say that I just wanted to grab this academy word right here. What I could do is I could count up and I could figure out at what index this academy string starts and I can give that to this substring method. So it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that capital A starts at eight. So when I just give this eight, now when I run the program, it's just gonna print out Academy. So it's gonna print out all the text that is including and after that eight index. So it'll just print out Academy. I could also give this a range. So let's say I just wanted to print out, instead of Academy, just ACA, right? What I can do is I can give this another number. And this brings me to another point is, a lot of times in Java, you can pass in multiple values inside of these methods. So these would be referred to as parameters. And so we would say I could pass in multiple parameters into this method. In order to do that, I'm just gonna type a comma and we wanna put another number here. And this is gonna be the index that we wanna stop grabbing the string. So here we have eight, nine, 10. So I wanna stop grabbing it when we get to that 11th character. So I'm gonna put 11 in here and now we should just be able to grab ACA, which we can do. So you'll notice that this first number here, this eight, that gets included in the substring. So this capital A is at index position eight, and that's gonna get included 
inside of the substring as we can see over here. But the second number, this 11, which is this D, that's not gonna get included inside the substring. So that's just like a little tip that you guys can use. I also wanna show you guys uh, a, a different way that we can do this. So we can actually pass in a method inside of another method. So let's say that in this phrase, I only wanted to grab the first word. Right? How can I only grab the first word? Well, what I want to do is just grab the word up until I see the first space. So we can actually use the methods that we've learned so far in this video to do something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to say I want to start grabbing the string at zero, right? So I want to definitely want to grab the first word. So I'm substring. I want to put zero. But then we need to put an index where we want to stop grabbing the word right? And let's just assume that I don't know the index of this space, right? I just want to grab the first word. I can actually use another method. We could use that index of method in order to get the index of this space. So I could say over here, phrase dot index of, and in here we can just put a space. So now this is going to tell us the index of the first space inside of this phrase string. And it's gonna use that as the ending index for the substring. So I'm gonna run this program and you'll see now we're just getting the word draft. So if I was to change this, which is cool, like I could type out whatever I wanted in here and it's always just gonna grab this first word. So I'm gonna click play and you'll see it grabs that first word up until the first space. So we're saying phrase.substring, we're starting the substring at the first character, so it's zero. And then the last character where we want to stop is going to be the index of the first space in the string. So hopefully that makes sense. And this is just an introduction into using these string methods. There's actually a few more that I'm sure we'll get into in the rest of this course. But for now, just know that that's how we can use different methods on strings. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.